Tunnel Rhino. Good god, does this stage take its sweet time. The glacial pace isn't exactly helped by the gay construction worker anthem they've got playing in the background. You wanted some validation for all the bitching I do about the soundtrack? Here you are. Despite so many drawn out tracks with nothing at all happening, this is a fairly eventful segment. There are a few clever traps here or there towards the end, a fight with the first of Doppler's minions, and the greatest mini-boss of all time. This is also the first level where we meet the most infuriatingly pointless enemy ever, the Green Barriers. Remind me why these things exist? At no relevant point in the game are they ever a remote danger. Like drawn out elevators, empty stretches and otherwise, they're only here to break the pace. This enemy and the overall tepidness of the stage are good examples of what I mean when I say X3 can become painfully dull sometimes. The entire first section was just lawn, empty, and obtuse terrain for its own sake. Not a single enemy or obstacle poses as creative threat. Nothing really plays to the level's theme either. Some falling dirt and otherwise empty spike pits. Oh boy. It does get gradually more crowded and interesting during the very end though. A lot like Blast Hornet stage come to think of it. X3 is a game of ups and downs, and an obsession with ramming, but we'll get to that in a minute. Bit is very much the more complex of the two minions, and he's another one of those battles that's deceptive until you discover how to manipulate it. Bit follows a very strict pattern. Jump, and when level with you, ram forward with a saber. At various checkpoints during his health, he'll initiate other attacks. The key to this fight is realizing how to dodge these while still tracking Bit's pattern. Really, this plays out like Blast Hornet. Difficult until you hammer out your approach, simple from then on. Since he follows his AI to a T, there aren't any surprises. You know exactly what attack he's going to use when he stops, and they behave the same way each time. The one trick that he never got off is to fire two projectiles, both of which home in on you twice. It's not fun wrapping your head around that. These battles are peculiar because you have the option of finishing them off or not. Using Bitter Bite's weakness on them is going to destroy them entirely when the fight ends. If you kill both, you change the boss at the end of the first Doppler stage. Same goes with Vile, who also makes a reappearance, which becomes very important later on, because killing him doesn't just alter a boss, it alters an entire stage. Still nothing to mention here. More of the same featuring slow-ass boulders. Of course, we could experiment with my light-hearted silliness to break up the monotony, forget the horrific potential of that tangent, because the mini-boss and his alarmingly equipped pelvis do a good job making light of things for me. Ignoring the very obvious fact that this is more depressing evidence of how little they tried with everything concerning Tunnel Rhino, you might have noticed a growing fixation on ramming attacks by now. Far be it for me to impose judgment on someone's creativity from atop my one pitch of voice fits all high horse, but literally 70% of the bosses in this game have some variation on ramming from one end of the room to the other. Maybe there's a master stroke of allegory about the drones of society in there, but maybe they just felt lazy. The last portion of level is the only one to use its enemies to a purpose. Things are crowded in here, and this upcoming part is particularly cruel. There's probably a quicker way to manage the small army of crabs and otherwise in this climb, but I really didn't have the heart to risk it seeing as replaying this dull fucking level feels uncannily like Groundhog Day. Except instead of Murray keeping things cynically tolerable, there's me putting myself to sleep. Tunnel Rhino himself defies proper description for just how insulting everything about him is. First off, the concept of a fucking rhinoceros made of drills is one of the hardest things I can think of to fuck up, but Capcom managed it by making him behave like a complete retard. Also, he moves around on roller skates. Please help. Secondly, I get to add his fight to my steadily growing list of not-so-poetic ironies that shouldn't be, since he's damned challenging without the dash. What tactical genius you see playing out before you now is the only thing Rhino will ever do. It's also deceptively fucking threatening for one reason, his speed. Rhino is just as fast as anyone in X3, and X cannot jump over him. This turns the entire battle into a matador affair where you just keep goading Rhino back and forth, praying you can outrace him. When Rhino charges the walls consecutively, it's a lovely throwback to my fun with Rainy Turtloid, because absolutely no deviation from your repetitive movement is tolerable. Even turning around for a second to fire at him means you're getting hit unless you do it directly after he starts his loop, while you still have a bit of distance on him. 
It ends up being a waiting game for him to pretend he's faking you out. The so very dangerous part is that X must jump very specifically each time he nears a wall. You can't lose any height on this jump when you're in the worst of things. You need to place it precisely so you can wall jump without any rhythm loss, or he's eventually going to overcome you no matter what you do. On the refight, this becomes one of the hardest obstacles in the game, but that's a ways off yet.